Hey everyone, and welcome to our Power of Jeppesen Charts webinar. This is a new webinar that we're doing specifically about Jeppesen Charts, and especially Jeppesen Charts within ForeFlight Mobile, just to demonstrate uh, how well integrated the charts are with the app and how powerful they are in terms of helping you uh, plan and conduct flights. So our presenters for today are me, Sam Taylor. I'm ForeFlight's content marketing specialist, Josh Pava, who is ForeFlight's product analyst, and he's also a Challenger 605 pilot who uses Jeppesen charts in ForeFlight for all of his flying, so he's very intimately familiar with how Jeppesen charts work within ForeFlight, and he'll be talking more about that integration itself. And then we have Aaron Jacobson. He is Jeppesen's corporate technical leader, and he is uh, he himself is intimately involved in creating some of these charts, uh, managing the data, and just uh, managing the process of using the data to build these charts. And so he'll be taking a closer look at the charts themselves and providing an in-depth breakdown of the structure and format of some of the different charts. On the agenda for today, we're going to start by looking at the Jeppesen data within ForeFlight. And this is Jeppesen data that you don't need any kind of Jeppesen account or Jeppesen charts to access. It's just built into the ForeFlight app. And so Every user of the ForeFlight app is going to benefit from that data anyway. Next up, we'll take a look at Jeppesen charts themselves within ForeFlight, both purchasing or linking chart coverages, because you can either uh, purchase the coverages through ForeFlight or link an existing Jeppesen account. You have both of those options. And we'll also look at downloading and actually using the Jeppesen charts within the ForeFlight app. After that, uh, we'll take a look at the Jeppesen charts in depth. And that'll be uh, where Aaron will be giving a brief overview of the process of uh, processing the, the data and turning them into charts, as well as an in-depth look at the layout and the benefits of the Jeppesen charts, uh, the benefit that you get from that really well-defined and consistent layout. And finally, we'll have questions and answers at the very end of the webinar. Before we get started, I want to point out that next week is EAA Spirit of Aviation Week. So in place of a, a live Oshkosh, unfortunately, we will be doing everything virtual, but we will still have some activity and events that you can participate in. So uh, please uh, you know, learn more about these and, and see what's going on. We'll have twice daily or more webinars, and these include the familiar uh, webinars that you may have seen if you visited uh, uh, Oshkosh in the past, the ForeFlight Fundamentals, ForeFlight Power Users, and ForeFlight What's New webinars, as well as some additional webinars we've come up with. We're also hosting a contest called Cross Connect the Dots, uh, and that's something that'll involve uh, daily winners as well as a grand prize winner at the very end. So definitely learn more about how you can participate in that. And lastly, we are going to have a special offer for brand new Jeppesen Chart customers. Definitely stay tuned for that if you're interested in Jeppesen Charts, but you've never used them before. You can learn more about all of these activities that we're hosting at foreflight.com slash EAA. One of the webinars that is being hosted next week is uh, a Jeppesen Nav Data, the Power Behind Your Displays webinar. And this is hosted by Jeppesen. It'll be on July 21st at 10.30 a.m. Mountain Time. And this is a webinar, uh, in contrast to the current webinar, which is specifically about Jeppesen charts in ForeFlight, this webinar is more about Jeppesen nav data uh, in your aircraft's panel avionics. And so this will help you learn about the industry standard data services that Jeppesen uses, why those data services are so good, and how you can sign up for some of those. And you can register for that webinar at foreflight.com slash PIC. Lastly, before we begin, just some housekeeping items regarding the GoToWebinar interface. You can ask any questions you have at any point during the webinar via the GoToWebinar message panel on the right. We'll be responding to your questions as they come in by text, and we'll also answer a few of them out loud at the very end. So don't uh, feel pressured to wait until the Q&A session to submit questions. Please submit them whenever they pop into your head because it makes it a lot easier for us to answer them, and it makes it more likely that you'll end up getting your question answered. If you're having any kind of audio problems, we recommend joining from a computer, not a mobile device. We've noticed that people who join from mobile devices tend to experience these problems more frequently. Uh, but if you are experiencing those problems, 
please let us know and let us know what device you're using and we may be able to suggest some uh, workarounds or fixes to get it working again. Lastly, this session is being recorded and it'll be accessible afterwards at foreflight.com slash on frequency. So now let's move on to some of the Jeppesen data that's in ForeFlight. And this is data that you don't need any Jeppesen charts uh, to purchase. It's just built into the app. And so you can benefit from it, even if you're not a customer of Jeppesen. Like I said, you don't need to buy or link any Jeppesen charts in order to access this data within ForeFlight or the features that the data supports. And it's very likely that uh, you've been using most or all of these features uh, very happily without even realizing that the data that powers those features is coming from Jeppesen. And so uh, in the next set of a few slides, I'd just like to walk through a few examples of that data and how the ForeFlight application uses it in many different ways. So first up, we have the global high-resolution terrain data. This is what you can download uh, within the downloads view. Depending on your subscription type, uh, ForeFlight will automatically select certain downloads. Like if you're in the US, it'll automatically download high-resolution terrain for the US. But you can also select different regions around the world to download high-resolution terrain for those places. And so this terrain is used all over the app. It powers 3D view, like you can see there on the right. It powers synthetic vision. It powers hazard advisor. Pretty much anything involving terrain, when you download the high resolution terrain, it's going to give you a uh, much better resolution than the low resolution terrain, which is what uh, is downloaded by default for the entire world. Next up, we have the global high resolution base map. Just like the high resolution terrain, this is something that you can selectively download in the downloads view but it will be downloaded by default uh, for your region. This is something that provides roads, railways, mountain peaks and passes. On the right there, you can see Boston and, and the very complex road and, and highway system uh, near the airport. And here you have some examples of those mountain peaks and passes. And so this, uh, this is something we introduced late last year, I believe, and it's uh, just a really powerful feature to aid with VFR navigation if you don't have any other charts or maps turned on. Next up, we have global obstacles. And just like high resolution terrain, this is built into all sorts of different capabilities within ForeFlight. You can see synthetic vision there on the right, as well as hazard advisor just below it, highlighting those, uh, those communication towers in red and yellow on the map itself. These power the obstacle layer, as you can see there, hazard advisor, profile view, for example. Here you can see a helicopter about to traverse downtown New York City. And so all of those big obstacle spikes you can see there in the profile view. So once again, this is worldwide data, uh, very high quality data from Jeppesen, and it's used all over the application. Next up, we have global IFR nav data. Now, just to be clear, this isn't quite the same nav data as you would have in your panel, but it is a subset of it. And uh, as you can see, it's global. Maybe you're noticing a trend here that many of these uh, data sets are global. This nav data is something that powers the aeronautical map. And so you can see an example of that there on the right with the waypoints, uh, VORs, airways. All of those different aeronautical elements are going to be displayed directly on the aeronautical map. And it also powers Procedure Advisor. And so you can get global procedures, not just in the US, but all over the world. If you look at an airport and open up Procedure Advisor, you'll be able to see these arrivals, departures, and approach procedures uh, as long as you have it in your route. If you're in Europe, we also offer European VFR nav data, which is only available with the Four Flight Europe subscriptions. But for pilots in Europe, uh, this is especially important because this VFR nav data is uh, much more relevant and significant than it is in the US. And so we display this data using special icons that you wouldn't see uh, elsewhere in the world. But this is just another example of the really high quality data set that Jeppesen provides. We also provide global frequencies for airports, airspace, and FIRs and UIRs. And so uh, we've provided various frequencies for a long time, such as airspace or uh, uh, airport frequencies. But just uh, recently this year, we introduced this feature you can see on the right, 
which is showing you controlled airspace frequencies. So we're looking at Denver, and you can see a list of all of those different communication frequencies listed there. We also introduced the FIR and UIR frequencies, which doesn't, provide, uh, doesn't only provide frequencies, but also provides many different kinds of operational notes, cruise tables. Uh, so if you're flying off the coast or in other countries especially, uh, that information is going to be really, really important. Jeppesen also provides global airway and routing data. And this is slightly different from the nav data, and the, the main place that it's used is in helping ForeFlight generate its optimized recommended route. And you can see that on the right there. This is available with our Performance Plus subscription plan. And it's really what allows uh, the, the ForeFlight supercomputer to generate some of these routes, looking at airways and uh, different routing procedures to find the best route for your flight. Next up, we have global digital procedure data. This is something we've really started uh, using more heavily just in, in the past several months. And so we used it in the 3D approach preview. You can see there on the right, uh, if you have an approach in your route and you open up 3D preview, it'll actually show each of the approach fixes within 3D preview. And it includes the names of the fixes and other details like uh, speed and altitude restrictions for each fix. And we also display that directly on the overhead map. So this would give you the same view, but rather than being in 3D, it would be uh, within the overhead map. And so even if you don't have one of those, uh, even if you don't have a Jeppesen chart subscription, you can still easily see that approach fixed data right on the map. This feature is also included in Performance Plus. We also offer global airport data that powers the hotspot display on the aeronautical map. This is something we introduced just recently, which allows you to see those hotspots on the uh, airport diagrams that are built into ForeFlight's aeronautical map without having to overlay uh, an actual airport diagram. So that data is also coming from Jeppesen. And you can expect that in the, in the future, there's going to be a lot more data coming from Jeppesen and being integrated into ForeFlight. Like I said, uh, Jeppesen is just world renowned for their reliable and high quality data, and they have a whole lot more of it than uh, we're using at the moment. And so as we continue to dig into those stores of data and finding great use cases for them, you can expect some really amazing ForeFlight features coming in the next couple of years. So now that we've looked at all the ways that ForeFlight utilizes Jeppesen data uh, within the app itself, we're now going to turn to the Jeppesen charts within ForeFlight. So the first question is, how do you add Jeppesen charts to ForeFlight if you don't already have them? And there are two ways you can do this. The first is by linking an existing Jeppesen account to your ForeFlight account, and then you can access those chart coverages within ForeFlight. So if you already have a Jeppesen panel subscription, you might be able to do this right now, since a lot of Jeppesen panel subscriptions include a number of so-called seats, uh, which work with digital chart subscriptions. And so you could use those to sign into different apps like the uh, Jepson Flight Deck mobile app and various other apps. And you could use those seats as well to sign into ForeFlight if you have any seats available. The other option is that you can purchase Jeppesen charts directly through ForeFlight as an add-on to your ForeFlight subscription. And so this is nice because it avoids you having to manage multiple subscriptions and if, for example, you have a Jeppesen panel subscription, but it doesn't include any digital chart seats, then this would be the best option since you can very easily just add it to your ForeFlight subscription. And that also allows you to use it on all of your ForeFlight devices. So uh, you can use it up to three devices, two iPads and one iPhone, or two iPhones and one iPad at a time. You can also do this anytime without losing the value of your subscription, since anytime you renew before your subscription is over, ForeFlight will automatically discount that renewal based on the remaining time on your subscription. So don't be afraid of renewing early and thinking you're going to just lose that value for the rest of your subscription. You can renew at any time and we'll just discount it based on how much time you have left. So first up, let's take a look at linking an existing Jeppesen account to access those charts in ForeFlight. You start out by opening the More menu, and you tap the Jeppesen tab there on the right. Like I said, as long as you have seats available in your digital chart subscription, you'll be able to download the charts. 
If you don't have any seats available, uh, ForeFlight will point that out to you. So uh, you'll be able to see that as you go through this process. You go to that More Jeppesen and you sign in. Make sure you sign in using your Jeppesen username and password. Some other apps that you can use Jeppesen charts with ask you to enter the, uh, the serial number for that chart subscription or, or the chart coverage or the seat key. In this case, you don't enter the seat key at all. You just enter your Jepp Jeppesen username and password and it'll connect your actual account with ForeFlight and then you can select the coverage from there. So once you've signed in, uh, you still have to connect to coverage. So you tap install coverage and you can select from uh, the coverages that you have available. Now, most individual pilots will maybe only have one or two coverages, and so uh, it won't be too much of a choice. But you can see here that the names of the coverages are listed. Uh, the part that's blacked out there is the seat key. Uh, we don't want you all finding out the seat keys that we're using, so uh, we, we hit those. But you can also see uh, the tail numbers as well as the number of seats that are still available on those, uh, on those coverages. Also, when you sign into your Jeppesen account, that'll sign you in on all of your ForeFlight devices, but you still need to go and select a coverage on each individual device. And so each device that you use, uh, that you install that coverage with in ForeFlight counts as one seat key. And so if you only have one seat key available, then you'll only be able to get those Jeppesen charts on one of your devices rather than, than all of them that you can sign into with ForeFlight. After you select a coverage, you just tap the Begin Download button, and that'll immediately start downloading that coverage. Now comes the other option of adding Jeppesen charts to your subscription, and like I said, that's by purchasing the charts as an add-on to your ForeFlight account. All you have to do is sign in to your ForeFlight account uh, by entering your email address in the field right there, hit enter, and it'll automatically populate your existing uh, subscription selection so you can see what you have uh, as you make your changes. To add the Jeppesen charts, you just scroll down the page to this section called Optional Jeppesen IFR Charts. It's collapsed by default, but you can click on that to expand it and see all of the different chart coverages that are available. You just select a coverage. So in this case, we've selected CONUS USA and Hawaii. Uh, but of course, if you fly in other places, you can easily add all of those other coverages as well. With the coverage selected and with any other changes you want to make uh, to your subscription selected, you just complete the purchase and that'll add the charts to your ForeFlight subscription and it'll set your expiration date to one year from the day that you renewed. So anytime you renew, uh, rather than prorating it to the end of your, your current expiration date, it'll just automatically uh, set your expiration date to one year from that point. Also, if you have any promo codes uh, you can add, you can type them into the promo field down there and hit redeem, and that'll apply the promo to your cart. And that's important to know because uh, for any of you who are new to Jeppesen charts and haven't used them before, like I said before, we will be announcing a special offer to kick off the EAA Spirit of Aviation Week starting next Monday. Uh, and so stay tuned for a promo code involved with that that you can use on our buy page. Once you bought the charts, uh, the process of downloading them is essentially the same. You can go to the Jeppesen tab within ForeFlight. And rather than giving you options to select a coverage, uh, there's only one coverage you can use, and so there's no selection involved. It shows your coverages right there, uh, and you can tap that Manage Jeppesen Downloads button, and that'll take you straight to the Downloads page, uh, which shows you those new charts available for download. In this case, you can see that we are on the edge of a, a data cycle cutover, and so we have two sets of in route charts to download. Just like with any other charts in ForeFlight, we make uh, the next cycle downloads available before the expiration date. And so uh, you'll occasionally see that there will be two sets of different Jeppesen charts. One thing that's unique about Jeppesen charts is that unlike uh, the FAA charts, you download all of them at once. So none of the selections you make within uh, the download settings, such as selecting different states, selecting different download types. None of those apply to the Jeppesen charts, uh, partly because they're so well compressed. All you have to do is download all of them at once, and then that download will uh, update each data cycle. 
So now let's move on to some of what's included in a Jeppesen IFR coverage. And for this part, I'm going to hand it over to Josh Pava, since he is, uh, like I said, uh, very well versed in using Jeppesen charts within ForeFlight and some of the other materials that come with a Jeppesen chart coverage. So Josh, uh, if you want to go ahead and take us away at this part. All right, thanks, Sam. So what's included in a Jeppesen IFR coverage? Uh, Amongst the, the items that are included, we have global IFR in route charts. We have IFR terminal charts, which would include departure and arrival charts, approach charts, airport diagrams, some special diagrams as well, related ground charts, and the Jeppesen airway manuals. And global IFR in route charts. Uh, the IFR in route charts um, are essentially included with any IFR coverage that you purchase. Um, all the IFR subscriptions include them, regardless of the area that you've purchased. Uh, you'll instantly have access to the low and the high altitude IFR in route charts for the entire world. Um, I find this to be a nice bonus because it allows you to quite literally explore airspace anywhere in the world from your iPad. Uh, this also comes in handy if you happen to use simulator integration with ForeFlight because if you're going to be flying routes anywhere in the world, you have high and low altitude charts to support those. The IFR charts, uh, both high and low, can be separately selected from the maps layer selector within ForeFlight Mobile. These data-driven vector charts show different information at different zoom levels. So the tighter we zoom, the more information that's very specific we'll receive. As we zoom out, we get more general information. By tapping the gear icon, we open the settings window for the Jeppesen charts. And within this area, we can adjust the color theme from light to dark and control what's displayed on the Jeppesen charts. We can enable or disable the display of airports, airways, waypoints, nav aids, and airspace. If we want to see cultural information, we can toggle the enable VFR theme switch and that will enable us to see additional information specifically as we zoom in on the chart. Something that I think is very useful is in the Jeppesen charts in ForeFlight Mobile, the map layers that we're used to also work in the Jeppesen charts. So you may already be used to, if you're a user of our aeronautical map, if you can click airports, VORs, waypoints, or airspace, and you can get additional information on that selection. So with the built-in integration between ForeFlight Mobile and the Jeppesen in-route maps, we can rubber band a route together or touch waypoints and add them to our route. On the Jeppesen in-route chart, we can overlay radar, airmets, sigmets, pyreps, winds aloft, traffic, and many other pieces of information. It's a pretty handy functionality. Um, something that I hear a lot of ForeFlight mobile users talk about is for their, they wish for a way to combine the hundreds of data downloads that you often have with the FAA charts. And as Sam spoke about earlier, um, whereas the FAA charts are downloaded as individual files, by state or region, the Jeppesen charts are downloaded as a single file. So all of your in-route charts are downloaded together and all the terminal charts are downloaded together. So an added perk of, of, of this is that the download for the global set of the Jeppesen high and low charts is very compressed and it's a 673 megabyte download. And in comparison, if we were to download equivalent FAA coverage charts for IFR high and low, that size, that 673, is less than the IFR high and low charts for some states alone. So the Jeppesen IFR terminal charts are seamlessly integrated with ForeFlight Mobile and the ForeFlight features and workflows. Anywhere that you're currently using FAA charts integrated with ForeFlight Mobile, you can also use the Jeppesen charts. Jeppesen charts are prioritized over the FAA charts once downloaded. However, the FAA charts are still accessible either over the air via Wi-Fi or cellular or locally if they're downloaded. 
Those that have many states of FAA terminal charts selected for download within ForeFlight Mobile know that all the data takes up a, quite a bit of storage space. So as I mentioned in the previous slide, the Jeppesen in-route charts use storage space very efficiently, and the Jeppesen terminal charts are no different. The entire continental United States of America, the Jeppesen terminal charts are only 447 megabytes. So departure and arrival charts. The majority of Jeppesen terminal charts are georeferenced, and that includes SID and STAR charts. The benefit of this is that what it means to a ForeFlight mobile user is that your position will be displayed on the chart when a position source such as Sentry or perhaps your panel Wi-Fi is available. Not only is your position displayed on the chart, but the georeferencing means that we're able to overlay Jeppesen charts onto the ForeFlight mobile map, which also takes advantage of the various map layers that are available to help give the pilot a very complete, situationally aware picture of the flight. These Jeppesen charts are also available for use within the ForeFlight Mobile Procedure Advisor. So we'll go to Approach Charts as soon as the slide is done. For Approach Charts, all the Approach Charts are georeferenced as well as support the same capabilities as you're already used to with the FAA charts. Annotations, color inversion, and opacity are all supported in the Jeppesen charts. We'll dig deeper into the approach charts in the next section of this webinar. Airport diagrams. The Jeppesen terminal chart subscriptions include all of the standard charts that we're used to for airport diagrams, but in addition, they also often include additional charts specific to an airport, such as class Bravo, airspace, graphics, low visibility taxi routes, and as we'll see in the next section, due to expanded sheet sizing, we often find much greater detail available about an airport or procedure than we would otherwise find with the charts you might be using. Takeoff minimums and other important information is found easily and quickly in a standardized location on a Jeppesen chart. Within ForeFlight Mobile, we offer a dedicated Jeppesen section in our NOTAM tab where we can find chart change notices. Uh, when you have a Jeppesen coverage enabled within ForeFlight, you will also get a new drive in the document section of ForeFlight Mobile. Within this drive, you'll find a document called Introduction to Jeppesen Navigational Charts, along with the Jeppesen Airway Manual specific to your region of coverage. I like to think the, of the Jeppesen Airway Manuals as a one-stop shop for text and graphical information compiled from many different sources. So when you add Jeppesen coverage to ForeFlight, I'd encourage you to browse the manuals that become available to you in the Jeppesen Drive and specifically spend a bit of time familiarizing yourself with the index so you get a better understanding of what's contained within the manual. Some of the things that you'll find within the Jeppesen Airway manuals include airport signs and marking explanations, including some actual airport photos, which I find to be really useful to help visualize the markings that I'm reading about. You will also find tech routes, and preferred routes between various city pairs. We'll also find detailed procedure legends available to you in an easy to comprehend format. Thanks for following along as we introduce you to the Jepson chart integration within ForeFlight Mobile. I'm gonna turn it over back to Sam now. Thanks a lot, Josh. Uh, at this point, we're gonna move on to a, a more in-depth look at Jepson charts and uh, the layout and structure of the charts themselves. And so I'm going to turn it over to uh, Aaron Jacobson to take us away with that one. Thanks, Sam, and hello, everyone. I'd like to walk you through and highlight some of the elements shown on Jeppesen charts. Let's start off with how they're made. First, we get source documents from over 200 plus source providers from around the world. We take the source and analyze it to code and apply in our charts. Each piece of information gets verified by a second set of eyes and has multiple business rules to make sure it's correct. We then create a new or revise an existing chart. This gets repeated every 28 days and new data and charts will get extracted from in multiple different formats. By the numbers you can see from last year, we maintained over 100,000 sheets or 
one side of a sheet of paper. This broke down to over 50,000 standard sheets, and that goes into thousands of different coverages. Today, I'll walk you through a few of those chart types to include approach, sit star, and airport. Let's jump into it with the staple of instrument flying with the approach chart. Side by side, you can see some obvious differences between the Jepson chart and the FAA. Initially, you can see the use of color, overall organization. I'm gonna highlight the Jepson chart and some of the reasons we do what we do and point out some of the organization and interesting features. Now, looking at the Jepson chart, the layout is as follows. From the top, we have header, then the briefing strip, plan view, profile, and landing norms. This is all for approach charts worldwide. Diving into the top of the approach chart, you can see the header. And within the header, you'll find a number of pieces of information I want to highlight. At the top middle, we put two dates if necessary. One is a revision date and the other, if necessary, is the effective date. We issue the chart and unless it's revised and you get sent a new one, you know it's current. If you get one with an effective date, you know when it's going to be effective and then the old one will be obsolete. Also in the middle is the index number. The index number is useful for determining the place within the chart library and each of the number within the index number has a significance. The first number is the airport and all charts related will carry the same number, 10, 9, 29, and so forth, when there's more than one airport within the major area. The second one is the approach numbering from precision and then moving to non-precision and higher DA and MDA values from one moving up to nine. The third is the sequence number for the same type of approach at the same airport in sequence by the runway number, lowest to highest. This means that by knowing the index number, you can determine quickly if there might be a better approach at that airport with lower mens. City and state, we have them in the upper right. They're big, easy to read, format, and again, the header information is in similar positions throughout the different series of charts. Procedure and airport ident is located prominently at the top. Titling, titling is the same worldwide. We show both the ICAO and IADA idents and procedure idents are aligned throughout the various countries of the world. The next section on the chart is the briefing strip, which is a summary of some of the procedural information. I won't go through all the boxes, but here are a few that I'd like to mention. The frequencies are on the top from left to right with how you would typically use them. We allow for plenty of space and label the services such as DATIS and ACARS, as well as the call names for the frequencies. Moving to the next row, you'll see nav info, file approach course, and then this next box is the glide path intercept for crossing altitude. After your crossing altitude, you can see we're working our way down on an approach. You eventually get to a DA or MDA, and shown here we show the lowest for that procedure. Moving on a little further is the MSA and its sectors and any notes if needed. Farther down in the briefing strip is the missed approach text in its entirety. Beneath that are the procedural and equipment notes that will provide any additional information you may need when deciding if you can accept this procedure. Down to the plan view and the largest section, typically of the approach plate. This is where we use different scales and if necessary, larger pages to account for a good visibility of that procedure. We'll break up a procedure if needed to provide you the best overall view. This is an important aspect to keep the information clean and decluttered. Color is used for terrain contours and earth features such as lakes and streams. We also show things like railroads, city patterns, and roads to help for situational awareness. 
We use the full width of the chart to give the best view for the procedure and allow for the mist to be shown at the same scale when at all possible. Symbols are unique to Jefferson, which include things as line styles, procedure tracks, nav aids, get unique representation for uh, localizers and VORs. Um, we also will shade the primary nav aid box for that procedure. Terrain and obstacles are shown in color and decluttered as much as possible as well. The high point on the chart is the bold arrow that is depicted within the given neat line for that chart, primarily for situational awareness. Last thing I wanted to point out is the scale. And we'll use that to give you the optimal view, um, which include, which could include a bigger sheet size if needed. The next section down is the profile. And this is shown using the full width of the chart, given as much space as possible. We show a glide slope, feather, and any other uh, descent information um, for the vertical view of the final approach segment. We align the profile direction to make the transition from the plan view of the profile. So a left to right profile would be aligned to a landing direction to the east. The last section of the approach chart is the minimums. In this section, you'll find the ground speed box is the first thing you'll see here and you'll get the descent rates that have been calculated from feet per knock mile to feet per minute, which makes for less math on the approach. You'll get angles and multiple approach speeds uh, to choose from as well. We also include the missed approach point location so you don't have to travel to another part of the chart to get that. Next to the ground speed box is the missed approach icons and approach lights. Here we give you a quick reference to your missed approach. The entire mist is included in the text above, but this provides the immediate first steps to get you up and on your initial mist. The minimums table is separated by columns for each available DA or MDA for that procedure. Moving down the column, you get visibility and any notes related to that descent limit. One of those columns is the lights out. The lights out columns are unique and calculated by Jepson to provide you with all the criteria you need at a glance. We pull this information in the chart and we remove the calculations to make it easier on the pilots. Sid Star is the next chart series that we're going to take a look at. And the first thing you'll probably notice is the size of the page. Uh, in, in this example, you can see the Jefferson chart on the left and the FAA's version on the right. And as well as the size of the page, you'll probably notice the colors for speeds, altitudes, and the MSA depicted on the chart. Uh, in the next slide, you'll see a sample of a side-by-side -side comparison of a similar uh, page. Um, I'll break down some of the features that make the Jefferson chart unique. And the first one is the georeference chart uh, to scale. And this allows us to provide uh, own ship and give the pods this ultimate form of situational awareness. Uh, as well, the page size, uh, this gives us um, additional room to get all the pertinent information, uh, notes, and we include the routing and obstacle information as well, versus having to go to an additional page to get the narrative uh, like the FAA charts. Uh, the number five is the MSA and we put that on the chart and it's just for greater situational awareness as well as we put the grid moras on uh, for those getting radar vectored or uh, off route segments the high point is again shown here for that at a glance safety aspect also serves and secondary reports are shown in the chart in gray for secondary and blue for the airports this procedure can 
also be used at. When there's a speed restriction for the procedure, we'll put this information at the top of the chart in the magenta color for easy visibility. The airport diagram or 10-9 series, as I talked about earlier, is again laid out in the same format with header and frequencies and so forth. You can see here, the sheet size again comes into play to get as detailed as possible. Breaking down the airport diagram, there's some things I'd like to point out. First is that it's geo-reference, which means you can depict a known ship that makes taxi around the airport easier at larger or even at smaller ones when you can glance down and quickly see where you're at. We provide airport diagrams for all airport IFR airports in our library worldwide. Granted, some are larger than others, but you always get one with the same level of analysis regardless of location or size of the airport. Along those lines, you'll get multiple images to help with traversing across the airport if necessary. If there's a gate or a complicated intersection, we use an inset. There could be a de-icering, as I have an example later to show you, um, or detailed taxiways. We'll add additional charts to help with uh, visibility in those uh, particular areas. On the chart, uh, hotspots are clearly identified, and on the Back of the diagram on larger airports or just below the diagram on smaller ones, you'll get the hotspot text describing it. Again, we're trying to give you all the information you need at your fingertips. Approach lights are also provided on the diagram for briefing and situational awareness to help with that big picture and getting familiar with the airport. While the airport diagrams are for movement on the airport, some find it useful for planning purposes and briefing while en route to your destination. Roads, water, and railroad tracks are again additional pieces of information that pilots have asked for to help with moving around the airport while planning. For example, if they know a highway passes under or parallel to a runway or taxiway, that's useful information for them to see. Text boxes are where we put notes for that particular Airport. Some airports have more than others, but we'll put the note close to the related ground feature and if unable, we'll leader it. We'll also include airport operation and general notes related to that airport in a note box so you don't have to leave the diagram. Comm sectors are the telephone uh, type line style, and this shows the breakdown of communication sectors at a given airport. The airport diagram uh, 109A is Jepson's way of pulling more of the airport's information into a single location. If this information fits, it'll be on the same side of the chart, but for those larger locations like here in Minneapolis, we use a 109A. Starting at the top left, you'll see the general notes, which are all the notes, airport notes, that aren't on the chart itself that are related to general operating within the airport area. Next, you'll find the additional runway information band. And within, you'll get a lot of useful information about the runway, lighting, as well as runway lengths. Hotspot text is next, and it's simply the explanation from source for the hotspot. Moving down, or in this case, to the other side, You'll get the takeoff and obstacle departure procedure information if applicable at that location. And last is the alternate MINS, which provide any notes related to using as an alternate and related procedural information. Again, all this information I've mentioned is to make it easier on the pilots to see in one location instead of referencing multiple publications. Include an example of one of the additional charting types you'll also get in a Jepson subscription, such as noise abatement, obstacle departure procedures and construction. I included um, here a low visibility chart. And on this low visibility chart, uh, we provide special taxi instructions for airports that have um, low visibility procedures. Uh, we provide uh, different RVR values 
for both inbound and outbound directionality, and we'll create charts for all the different types of RBR values uh, as necessary for that particular airport. The last chart I have is for the airport diagram. This is a sample of one of those detailed views I was talking about earlier. Uh, this one in particular is a de-ice area, but it could just as well be a construction or ramp area that just needs increased uh, visibility. Um, thanks again, and back to you, Sam. Thanks, Aaron. Before we move on to Q&A, just a couple of reminders. Uh, don't forget that if you want to learn about our EAA Spirit of Aviation Week events and register for some of the webinars we'll be hosting during that week, uh, you can register for those at fourflight.com slash EAA. You can also register for Jeppesen's NavData webinar, which will be hosted uh, this coming Tuesday at fourflight.com slash PIC. And I believe there's also a link to register for that uh, from the EAA page as well. And finally, if you're new to Jeppesen's digital charts, maybe you've used the paper charts before, or if you've never used any of their charts at all, stay tuned for a special announcement coming early next week regarding how you can give those charts a try. Uh, you'll definitely want to be paying attention to our social media channels. We're on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. So you'll definitely want to be following one of those channels uh, to learn about this announcement. So let's move on to some questions. All right, so uh, we've got a number of questions that have come in. So uh, I'll go ahead and read through each one of these and uh, we'll get some answers. First question, are we able now to have both JEPFD and ForeFlight chart subscription capabilities simultaneously? Josh, do you think you can answer that one? Sure. Um, so you can use the Jeppesen charts with both apps if you have the chart seat keys that we were speaking about earlier in the webinar. So if you have enough seat keys to spare, you can certainly use it between both the apps. On the other hand, if you buy Jeppesen charts through ForeFlight Mobile, then you can use the charts only from within ForeFlight. Great, thanks. Next question. Uh, when I try to use Jeppesen IFR low charts as a layer in the map view, as I zoom in or out, different levels of information come in and out. But there's often so much there, it's unusable. Is there a way to use them better? So we received uh, two or three questions that were similar to this related to the fact that um, with the Jeppesen chart default settings, uh, at certain zoom levels, the information can be very, very dense, um, even overwhelming and difficult to read at times. And so that is just a function of, of how the charts work. Uh, and if you have all of those uh, different data layers enabled, then all of them will show at once. And the solution to uh, declutter the chart a little bit and make it a bit easier to read is if you go to the map settings menu, which is that gear button at the top of the map next to the FPL button, when you have Jeppesen charts enabled, you have some new options there that allow you to deselect some of the uh, aeronautical elements from the Jeppesen charts and hide them. And so, for example, if, if you uh, feel that you don't need to see waypoints at that moment or you don't need to see airways or something, you can hide some of those and that will make it much easier to read information at different levels. Of course, you can also, uh, if you're using uh, the high and low charts, the, the high chart uh, obviously is mostly showing uh, high, high airways. And so, um, the, the decluttering will be a little bit different with that one as well. But that's really the best way to declutter the Jeppesen maps when you're at certain zoom levels. Next question here. Uh, this person says, I'm having an Avidyne IFD 550 installed at the moment. If I get a JEP subscription for it, can I use that same subscription on ForeFlight? Or will it be an additional cost uh, to get the charts on ForeFlight? Josh, do you think you can take that one as well? Sure. So similar to the last question where we spoke about seat licenses, uh, in the event of an Avidon IFT 550, you'll need to make sure that you have a seat free with your subscription to use within ForeFlight. So um, you can certainly purchase additional seats to be used within ForeFlight. And as a reminder, there's one seat per ForeFlight enabled device. So in other words, each ForeFlight uh, so 
installation that you have uses one seat license. Uh, another option that you could have if you're interested is purchasing the Jeppesons within Foreflight, which we talked about earlier at www.foreflight.com slash buy and follow the directions to scroll down to view uh, the various Jeppesen subscriptions that are available. And as a reminder, that allows you to use Jeppesons with up to three devices on four flight only. Yeah, so if uh, if your panel subscription isn't a factor in the decision, then getting the charts through four flight is um, definitely the, the, the better move just because you can use them on all three of your devices uh, and you don't have to worry about that seat issue. Next question here, uh, when I select a procedure when planning a flight, ForeFlight puts a Jeppesen chart on the map by default. How do I get ForeFlight to put an FAA chart on the map by default instead? So as we uh, discussed in the webinar, when you add a Jeppesen subscription or you, you buy the charts or you link the charts, ForeFlight will automatically prioritize those Jeppesen charts over the FAA charts um, because I think it, it's a fairly natural assumption that if you have the Jeppesen charts, you probably want to be seeing those. Um, and so that, that's the reason we do that. There isn't a way at the moment to disable that setting and get back to only using the FAA charts. But as we showed in the webinar, those FAA charts will still be available for you. You can still select them. You can still download them and everything. Uh, but when you do things like selecting a procedure or you know adding a, an approach chart to the map, uh, it will default to the Jeppesen charts and you'd have to tap on the chart to scroll down and switch to the FAA chart if you want to see that instead. Another question here is, uh, I currently have a Jet Paper Chart subscription. Can that subscription be linked to ForeFlight? So uh, I probably don't have to say that you can't import paper charts into ForeFlight. Um, and really the answer is that if, if that Jeppesen Paper Chart subscription does happen to include digital charts as well, then you would be able to sign into that uh, subscription ForeFlight and access those charts. Uh, but I, I can't say for certain whether that's a possibility, but my assumption would be that if you have a, a paper chart subscription, it's probably not going to include um, those digital chart seats as well. So another question here, uh, once again, this is one related to that, to that seat question. This is, again, a question that we get very frequently. I thought that a JEP subscription was only good on one device, meaning you can have a ForeFlight account and use it on one iPhone and one iPad, but Jeppesen only allows you to put the charts on one device only. Is that correct? And so again, it's really just a matter of the number of available seats that you have with your Jeppesen subscription. If you have only one seat available, you can only sign into one device with those charts, or rather you can, you know, you'll be signed into your Jeppesen account on different devices, but you can only download the charts on one single device. And as we showed during the webinar, when you're selecting coverages uh, within that more Jeppesen view in ForeFlight, it'll show you how many seats are available for each coverage. So if you go to select a coverage and it says zero seats available, then you can no longer uh, download that coverage on any new devices. Whereas if you buy the charts through ForeFlight, then it will automatically select and download them on all of your signed in for flight devices. So you don't have to mess with selecting coverages or, uh, you know, really having to manage uh, which devices you have the charts on because it'll just be downloaded to all of your signed in devices. Next question. Uh, I'm a CFII candidate and I'm interested in using JEP charts during training. Is there a way to obtain a trial period of JEP charts? So, Generally, we, we don't offer trials of JEP charts, um, but like I mentioned earlier, uh, definitely stay tuned to the special offer that we'll be announcing um, in, in uh, starting next week. Uh, keep an eye out for that because uh, you could definitely take advantage of that offer to uh, maybe be able to try some Jeppesen charts without paying the, the full price. So stay tuned. Next question. Uh, if I add Jeppesen charts on your program, can I shut off the NOS charts to minimize data loaded every month? Josh, do you want to take this one? Sure. Um, so you absolutely can do that. And I know of a lot of users that, that do that. And the way you would do that is you go within ForeFlight Mobile, you go to the More menu, 
you press the downloads button. And in this case, assuming we're talking about the United States, we click the United States button. And then from there, we're presented with various options about what we want to download. Um, assuming in this case, you most likely are going to want to turn off the taxi diagrams and terminal procedures, possibly the IFR highs and lows as well. And once you've done that, anything that you've toggled to the off position will no longer download the, the FAA government um, chart set. And uh, as we talked about earlier in the webinar, Jeppesen automatically downloads terminal charts and global high and low in route charts for the entire world. So essentially all that data is going to be sorted up in Jeppesen now, and you'll no longer have to download the FAA charts. Right, okay, next one. Uh, oh wait, where am I here? There we go. Uh, I just updated my Jeppesen charts. How often and how do I update the four flight data uh, and the JEP data in four flight? Josh, do you want to take that one also? Sure, absolutely. Um, quite similar to the answer to the previous question, all of our downloads, whether it's Jeppesen or ForeFlight and FAA data, are all housed within the More menu, the Downloads button, and within there, you'll you'll see a, a bubble that pops up how many downloads you have. If you have something to download, you just press the Download button within the app, and whether it's, like I say, Jeppesen, FAA, or ForeFlight data, it all downloads in that section. Everything goes the same time and you'll have all the data you're looking for. Next up, uh, with automatic downloads, how much memory is required? So uh, really it doesn't matter if you, uh, it, having automatic downloads enabled doesn't affect this at all. Um, automatic downloads will simply download uh, everything that comes up for download uh, without you having to initiate it. But the actual amount of space that would be used would be the same. Uh, in terms of the memory that would be used by the Jeppesen charts, it really depends on your coverage like we showed. However, like we mentioned in the webinar, uh, Jeppesen charts are much better compressed than, um, they're more effectively compressed rather than the FAA charts uh, due to the fact that they're vector charts, data-driven charts. And so uh, the the, total amount of memory you can expect is much lower than for the equivalent FAA charts. And so depending on your coverage, you could expect it to take up between uh, maybe about one to, uh, heck, you could go up to maybe one to three gigabytes, perhaps. If you just have a you know full USA coverage, you would be about one, maybe one and a half gigabytes. And if you had total world coverage, it would actually only be uh, about three or four gigabytes, I believe. So very, very good compression on those charts and not very much memory is required to use them. Okay, next up, uh, how can I view the Jeppesen revision letter so that I know what charts have been updated every new cycle? Josh, can you answer that? Absolutely, so uh, all the Jeppesen updates or the update letters are housed within the document section and the Jeppesen Drive, which will appear once you have a Jeppesen subscription linked onto your ForeFlight account. And then you can go to the Jeppesen Airway Manual that's appropriate for your, your area. So in our case, in the United States, we look at the North America Jeppesen Airway Manual, and you'll, you'll have the chart change notices as well as nav data change notices uh, that, that's housed within the, the first section of the manual. I know if you happen to have a current manual, it's Page five of the Jeppesen Error Manual for North America has the the uh, chart change notice and nav data change notice index, and you can see it spans about fifteen to ninety seven pages, depending on what you're looking for from the various from the various coverage areas. All right, next question: Can yeah, can the aircraft lay? Uh, let's see, can I overlay? Let me try one more time. Can the aircraft lay over top the chart to show the actual location in reference? So they're, let me interpret this. They're asking if uh, if the aircraft will show on top of the Jeppesen chart to show uh, the, the aircraft's location, your current location on that chart. Josh, do you think you can take that one? Sure, if you have a GPS source that For Flight Mobile currently recognizes, any Jeppesen chart that is geo-referenced is going to be able to overlay your position on it. So I would say for the most part, you can expect that with approach charts 
some SIDS and STARS. And of course, the high and low altitude in route charts will also be able to have the aircraft overlaid over exactly where it is on the map at that time. Yeah, and a, a key uh, piece to note about that is that that only applies uh, if you have a Pro Plus subscription or higher, because that is the, the level of four flight subscription that enables you to uh, see your position on the charts and overlay those charts on the map. And so even if you have a, a Jeppesen chart subscription, which has those geo-reference charts, if you don't have, uh, you know, if you have a four flight basic subscription, if you don't have a pro subscription or higher, then you won't be able to take advantage of that uh, geo reference charts. So in terms of four flight subscriptions, uh, it, it definitely makes a lot more sense to have at least pro plus or performance plus in combination with the Jeppesen charts. Because if you have those Jeppesen charts, but you don't have the geo referencing, then you're missing out on, on one of the really big benefits of, of the Jeppesen charts. Next up here, uh, this question is, it says the chart is effective May 21st. Do we just assume that it's going to expire 28 days later? Uh, Aaron, are you available to answer this one? Sure. Um, yeah, no, it's, uh, it's going to remain effective until you get a new chart or it is revoked. So it doesn't expire after 28 days. Perfect, thanks. Uh, and, and one thing I want to briefly clarify about my, my previous answer, um, that answer doesn't apply to the, the in-route charts. Uh, so if you, if you have a, a four flight basic plus subscription, of course, you'll still be able to see your position on the map, on the maps view, uh, and that includes the Jeppesen IFR in-route charts. I was just referring to the procedure charts like the approach arrival departure charts and the airport diagrams. Those are the ones that uh, require you to have pro plus or higher to see your position on them. Another question here, how are the visibilities calculated outside of the U.S. Um, if no state provided visibilities are available? And Aaron, do you think you can answer that one as well? Sure. Yeah, it's a, it's a complicated answer when you get down into the details, but uh, basically we use uh, each state has uh, operating aerodrome minimums that they uh, use for that airport and um, mainly it's the IKO doc um, 9365 it's all weather operating uh, operations manual that we use the tables from to calculate if they're missing. Thanks. Next question, uh, how do I find chart legends for the Jeppesen products on ForeFlight? So this was actually something that, that Josh um, mentioned within the webinar. So Josh, can you uh, uh, revisit that, that question? Absolutely. So once you have a Jepson subscription linked onto your ForeFlight account, either by purchasing the charts within ForeFlight or by adding uh, you know, your Jepson account uh, and, and password to ForeFlight itself, the Jepson drive will become exposed in the document section of ForeFlight Mobile. And within that Jeppesen drive, you're going to find a document that's called Introduction to Jeppesen Navigation Charts. And that document is essentially uh, about 100 pages long and talks about all the sorts of symbology that you might be seeing on the Jeppesen charts. All right, next up. Um... This person says, I'm a 35 year JEP user, but I'm a newbie with ForeFlight. Can you point me to a default setup procedure for configuring ForeFlight for just using Jeppesen charts? Uh, and if that works, are there any additional features that would complement that configuration? So that's a really good question. And uh, I would say, while we don't have any particular resource that is specific to uh, using ForeFlight with Jeppesen charts, the great thing about Jeppesen charts is that they integrate pretty much seamlessly with uh, the rest of the ForeFlight app. And so if you know how to use ForeFlight uh, just without Jeppesen charts, then you're, you're learning how to use it with Jeppesen charts. There's, there's very little that you would need to relearn uh, in that respect. And so I would suggest that you view some of our great video resources, such as our, uh, our ForeFlight Fundamentals and Power Users courses. Um, those are both great 
uh, uh, courses that we've put on and, and we'll actually be hosting them next week. And so if you go to our on frequency page uh, that you can see on the screen there, uh, you'll be able to register for those webinars and get a good introduction to ForeFlight. But definitely also go to foreflight.com slash videos. That has all the videos we've we've ever done and uh, they can be a very great way to learn how you should have ForeFlight set up and uh, some some tips related to that. And as I mentioned, in terms of additional features to complement the linked Jeppesen charts, definitely having at least the Pro Plus subscription plan will ensure that you can get the full value of those Jeppesen charts uh, in terms of having the geo referencing on, on the plates and airport diagrams. So really a key piece to consider when you're choosing which four flight subscription to purchase. Next question is, uh, I have Jeppesen charts on my iPad. How can I get them on my phone as well? So again, this depends on how you, you've gotten those charts. If you've linked an existing Jeppesen account and you signed into it on your iPad, if you only have one seat left, then you can't get it on your iPhone without uh, purchasing additional seats. However, if you uh, go and purchase those Jeppesen charts through ForeFlight at foreflight.com slash buy, then uh, you wouldn't actually even be posing this question because as soon as you looked at your iPhone, you would see the charts right there available for download because we automatically put those purchase charts on all of your signed in ForeFlight devices. So if, uh, if, you're, if you've linked the account, your Jeppesen account, then you can uh, go to the Jeppesen tab in ForeFlight and tap on the, the coverage button and it'll show you how many seats you have left in your coverage. And if you have at least one seat left, then you can go use it on your iPhone. But if you have no seats left, then you would have to go and purchase additional ones. Another quick question here, do you have to have Performance Plus to use JEP charts? So as I've just been saying, you don't, you, you only need to have, in fact, you can have any, any ForeFlight subscription uh, with Jeppesen charts, but really Pro Plus, I would consider to be the um, probably the, the lowest subscription level where you can really uh, get some of the value of the Jeppesen charts with that geo-referencing. But you are not required to have Performance Plus with the charts at all. So this is a question uh, not actually related to Jeppesen charts, but related to our uh, EAA Spirit of Aviation activities next week. They said that the, the webinars next week look like repeats of past webinars I've seen. Can you advise? And so, yes, uh, every year at Oshkosh, we do our fundamentals, power users, and what's new courses, in addition to a, one or two others that we do less frequently. We do these every single year, and so you might think that um, if you've seen it once, then you've seen all of them, and that's definitely not true. Uh, we generally refresh, especially the what's new in the power users course. We refresh them every year, and uh, and honestly, there's a good chance that if you saw the Power Users course one year, you know what are the odds that you're going to remember every single thing that was presented in that the following year? So I would definitely recommend uh, not assuming that you've, you know, that you'll just be seeing the the same old information you got before. Now, if you have seen the Fundamentals course before, you probably don't need to see it again because that one does stay pretty con uh, constant from from year to year. But if you're brand new to Four Flight and you are still trying to learn the ropes, then I would definitely recommend watching that fundamentals course as well. Just a couple more questions here before we uh, wrap up. To have the high resolution terrain, uh, does it depend on my subscription level? No. So any subscription with ForeFlight can download the high resolution terrain um, as well as the high resolution base map. So you just go to more downloads, you go to uh, whatever region you have. If it's the U.S., you, you tap on U.S. at the very top. And at the bottom of the list of, um, of switches, you can enable high-resolution terrain and high-resolution base map. So that's not something that depends on your subscription. One more here. Um, can you purchase Jeppesen charts in certain regions or states of the U.S. instead of all the CONUS states? So this, this is something that you're able to do through Jeppesen. You can purchase smaller uh, sub-regions of the U.S. Or, or other places. And this is not something that we support if you're buying the charts through ForeFlight. Um, the kind of the, the, most, uh, the, the most granular you can get is buying all of CONUS and Hawaii. Uh, and that's a $200 uh, subscription for a year. We don't break it up into individual um, states and regions. However, if you have purchased those uh, smaller states and regions through Jeppesen, 
you can still access those charts within ForeFlight. So with that, uh, I think we're going to go ahead and call it. I see that there are still a bunch of questions um, in the queue here. A lot of you uh, submitted your questions during the Q&A or, or just when we started. So unfortunately, we won't be able to answer all of your questions now. But if you didn't get a question answered or if you felt that one of our answers wasn't satisfactory, please, please email team at foreflight.com. Uh, our support team answers questions like these uh, every single day, all day. It's what they do. And so please reach out to them and get your question answered uh, because I would hate to know that any of you were left unsatisfied by not getting one of your questions answered. Again, please visit any of these, uh, these links that you can see on your screen. If you want to learn about some of the events we're doing next week with EAA Spirit of Aviation Week, go to foreflight.com slash EAA. If you want to learn more about Jeppesen, honestly, if you go to that page, you're not going to learn anything more about Jeppesen charts in Foreflight because we just told you uh, in this webinar more than is what's on that page, but you can go there and see some some pretty screenshots of Jeppesen charts. Uh, if you want to sign up for some other webinars or view recordings of past webinars, that's something I should have mentioned uh, with that question involving how to learn about ForeFlight. Uh, if you go to foreflight.com slash on frequency, we have recordings of all of the other webinars we've done uh, during this series, which I think is uh, maybe 15, 16 webinars at this point. So lots of really good information in those webinars. So please go visit that page and uh, get some of that information. And finally, like I've been saying during this entire Q&A session, if you have any questions, please email, email team at foreflight.com. One last thing, there will be a survey uh, right when I hit close on this webinar. So please stick around and answer some of those questions. It just lets us know how we're doing and gives you a chance to provide some suggestions for future webinar topics. So thanks again, everyone. Uh, we hope to see you in the webinars next week during the Spirit of Aviation Week. And until then, thanks for joining.